Good day. Um, well, I'm going to share a word of encouragement with you about discipleship. Uh, and a component of discipleship, basically, prayer. You know, prayer, no one would dispute, is a significant part of a disciple's life. Um, we all know that. But how many of us really pray regularly? And, and I could use lots of metaphors right now um, to help us understand how essential prayer is to the life of a disciple. Um, like, a disciple without prayer um, is like a car without gas, a rocket ship without fuel, a recipe without ingredients, a mattress without springs or foam, uh, or it's like a deck without boards, or, or it's like a tree without leaves. It's, it's a paintbrush without paint. Okay, you can come up with a bunch more. Just put the comments down below here. Let's see how many more uh, metaphors we can come up with. A disciple's life without a good prayer life is like what? <laughs> but that's really not the point. It, it, what, what, we all know that we need to pray more often. All of us. But sadly, when it comes down to it, we're like a mixer without flour. So we need to pray more. We need to pray better, perhaps even. But let me just talk about um, a, a scripture that Paul writes in 1 Thessalonians 5, verses 16 to 18. He says, rejoice always, and here's a key one, pray continually. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Um, so you know me, I'm all about application. So to help us apply Paul's words, to help us get a better prayer life, or to, to pray continually perhaps, uh, let me give you just four things, um, four ideas that will help grow your prayer life. Okay, first of all, imagine Jesus right next to you and, and talk to him throughout the day. Um, this is a, a powerful way to build relationship with anybody. Um, for instance, I do this with Lydia. When, when I'm grocery shopping, pre-COVID-19 um, here, but before self-isolation, you know, if I'm out of the grocery store picking up a list of things and I've got the list and, and I know everything, but, but then I'll, all of a sudden, I'm not sure about this, then I would just call Lydia. And um, my phone brings her right to my side. She's with me right there in the store. And, and it, it's like, she's right there and I could talk to her. So if we could imagine Jesus right next to us all day long, we, we would just be more encouraged to ask him those questions. Um, talk to him about direction that we need to take. Talk to him about those things in our lives that, uh, that we know he is the only answer for. So imagine Jesus right next to you all the time. That's one way. Another way to help uh, grow our prayer life is to count your blessings uh, out loud or on paper even that's even better but I often or often when I think of what God has done for me um, I just open my mouth my mouth and say thanks I just say thank you Lord oh, praise God for that um, those words are thankful prayers or they are prayers of thanksgiving as we are encouraged uh, Hebrews 13 verse 15 says through Jesus therefore let us continually offer to God a sacrifice of praise the fruit of our lips that openly profess his name giving thanks for our blessings helps us remember just how much we have to be thankful for daily as something good happens you can just quickly say thank you Jesus doing this not only uh, keeps me in a better frame of mind, but also keeps me humble, realizing he is my provider. He is my source. He has provided all things for me. And as the day goes, I could be praying and, in essence, talking to him more and more and more uh, with these thanksgivings. Third, learn to pray in the moment when a prayer request comes up. Um, there's nothing better for someone to experience than 
someone praying with them right there and then, and they say, oh, please remember me in prayer. Uh, first of all, it encourages us uh, to, it encourages the person who's being prayed for, or second, it also um, helps us remember to pray for them and not forget it. And, and thirdly, it helps us pray more often. Uh, so when someone comes to me and, and, and says, oh, would you pray with, I, I try to remember to say, well, let's pray right now. And, and do it right then and there. I've done this with my neighbors and family members. It just, it's, it's a great way to pray more often. But fourth, and last on our list today, um, pray specifically. And by this I mean at a certain time or place in the day. Praying continually only flows out of a disciple's desire to connect with God. If we don't set time aside in our daily routines to pray, we are downplaying the importance of God in our life. Um, if all we do is pray while we drive or shop or work or do yard work, um, our mind is, is split between at least two different things and we're not really focusing on God. Um, in these days of self-isolation, I think it's proven to all of us that we need to firm up our relationship with God. And being a disciple who prays continually builds God into that first place in our life, a, a habitual place, a, a time of day, even a place in your house where you can pray. The habits that we place down now will keep us from being um, unfruitful and will help us be productive in our fruit bearing for Christ and his kingdom. Um, I want to share with you right now, uh, after this, it's going to, the video is going to continue with an interview that I recorded with Heather Lupin. Uh, she briefly uh, shares with us her journey uh, through these days of self-isolation. And, uh, and you can also get just her interview on YouTube or our Facebook channel. But um, I believe her words will encourage you and, and bless you and remind you uh, to be in prayer. Thank you for listening. God bless you. Heather, um, thanks for meeting with me like this to um, just chat and uh, talk a little bit about um, what God has been doing in your life through this time of self-isolation. Um, yeah. You've been um, laid off from the school where you were working. And mm -hmm. uh, so you're, you're home with your boys and um, obviously it, it, um, yep. there's obviously a whole lot to do when you are home with them, but mm -hmm. now uh, you are afforded some time. Yeah. Yep. For sure. Yeah. It's been a, a very different time in terms of how much, well, how much time and space there is to be um, pressing into God, to be, coming closer to his heart to, I mean, this is a really unique opportunity for me and for, I think quite a few others. I know there's a lot of people from our church that are still working, but there's probably quite a few others in a similar position to me, whether they're parents or whether they're at a different stage season of their life, but that are home when they wouldn't normally be home. And that's, especially for this extended period of time, quite, unique I would say in the opportunity that that it gives us yeah so I I mean I of course have to homeschool the boys so that takes up um, time but I also love to use some of that time to help them also to to um, come closer to the Lord and to do more um, searching of their own hearts and building of their own characters than than maybe I would even normally get when we're at school all the time so yeah and and you, and you understand the whole process of walking with christ and being a disciple uh, like you've mm -hmm. even studied spiritual formation is and your master's degree is in that um so you know one of the big objections we always hear right from the people that we talk to as well you know i'm too busy to to, to take time with god right too busy too busy mm -hmm. and and now many people are, are in places and even if they do work some of them just you know at night you you can't go out you can't do what you want mm -hmm. how would you tackle some of the some of those questions in people's lives that are oh, just too busy 
Um, how would you address something like that in someone's life? Well, what I found over time, I mean, at certain points in my journey of following the Lord, you have this kind of idea, which is not a not a wrong idea at all, but to, you see kind of a spending time with God as that devotional time and that being the sole time. And that sort of does, it is the type of... Um, type of time spending with him that is that is very concentrated so i can see why people might say well i don't have that half an hour or that hour or that 15 minutes even or whatever to just do that um but i think that as i've grown in my journey i've been able to realize that he doesn't just want us during that that concentrated half an hour time he wants, like how it says in, uh, I don't remember if it's Thessalonians, but it says to pray without ceasing, right? Mm. And I used to think like, how in the yeah. world do we pray <laughs> without ceasing? And I still, don't, I still don't have a, obviously a full understanding of what that means, but I do have a sort of a deeper understanding, I guess, of, of it being us constantly living in his presence every single moment. It's not just the time when we're just sitting there not just, but when we are taking that time to sit there and read the Bible, which is really important too, and do that yeah. specific prayer time, which is really important. But it's also just in every aspect of our lives, whatever we're doing, even if we're at work, um, if we're taking care of our children, anything like to have to constantly in the back of our minds, and not just in the back of our minds, but even in the forefront of our minds, be realizing yeah. we are in the presence of God and everything that we do in our lives can be worshiped to him and that doesn't just have to be like us constantly being in that perfect state of contentment all the time either because um david in the psalms and other psalm writers were pouring out their hearts in when they're in total grief like how we have our moments now and i'm sure many times in our lives but this current situation um, how you were talking about that a couple of weeks ago, like how we have those times where we just feel overwhelmed with grief. And those, just as much as we're walking through our day, can be just as much times to be pouring that out to him, even as we're washing our dishes, or even as we're working in our gardens and doing those yeah. extra hobby things that we don't normally get to do. Like Those are all opportunities for us to realize that we are in his presence and that he is with us constantly. It's like a, It's almost like whoever you're self-isolating with it's like that like you have a extended with period you. of time <laughs> with you. i have my extended period of time with my boys and um that's the way it is if we can think about that that's the way it's meant to be with god too he's constantly with us and there's no um need to be separated from him like in everything that we're doing and in all aspects of our lives to share to share our hearts with him and for him to share his heart with us and what we're doing mm. I know um, one of the one Sunday a few weeks ago you wrote uh, to Lydia and I and, and you just said hey I just wrote this little song and um, it came out of a quiet mm -hmm. time and 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 I don't know if that had really um, a, a lot to do with my next question here but you did write to Lydia and just talk to her about how you've been taking this time deliberately um, share sure. share a little bit about what God has been doing inside of you um sure during yeah. that journey so i think um well first first of all for specific things that i have been doing um to come closer to the lord is i have this book that i'm going through called um i have it right here i can just show you the cover if you want to it's called a 10-week journey to the heart of god and basically it's just this person, Claire Cloninger, she's leading us through um, aspects of coming closer into intimacy with Christ. And so then God, it's sort of like, it's called Dear Abba. So it's letters, because Abba is that special name that we can use for our father, daddy, like how it says in Romans. And um, it's him, he writes, she kind of writes from his heart to us out of scripture and that kind of thing. And then and then she gives us an opportunity to write from our hearts in regards to whatever it was that that specific um, topic was about that she was that she was bringing out that day. And it's basically every day you, you do that. And then 
and then you wait and you listen kind of like in um, emotional emotionally healthy spirituality where we learned about taking those silent moments to just sit in God's presence and then and God might say something to us in that. And so that's what she encourages every single time. Basically read the letter that he writes to us, the love letter. Then mm -hmm. we write from our hearts to him. And then we sit and we listen and see if he has anything more to add into our lives. So that's what I've mostly been doing. Mm -hmm. And um, so it's just um, a matter of him growing in me that that longing to be close to him longing to know him deeply to have a constant trust in him um, this is a totally different time I mean I have other things going on in my family too with my sister and my grandma but both with cancer and my sister's um, very very advanced and not well off with it um, she's she's okay in spirits and um, okay you know physically to walk around but it is a very very serious situation and we have no idea how that's going to play out other than it doesn't sound great and um so even that type of situation right in the middle of this i mean we have i'm very careful we're all very careful to keep her very safe because we think that she would be more weak and so those type even that in the middle of of this is sort of a big deal because we wait for information um that's difficult so it's a matter of even in something always throughout my life and throughout my family's life provided for us um he's always um taken us through on that journey faithfully and so it's good that i can look back to and say look at all these times when god has brought us and he mm. tells us that in the scriptures too about um how he says that to israel a lot he says remember what i've done for you remember how i brought you out of egypt out of slavery and so he's been reminding me of that like of all these times these tangible times throughout my life and my family's life say look at how faithful i am to you look at how much you can trust me you can sit with me in quietness and trust and that's where your strength is and so um yeah yeah so that's wow. the, the main so, it, so you, you you have compounded situations you you spoke briefly about how you know you're homeschooling your boys now and and but not mm -hmm. only that and the and the self-isolation but then your sister and your mom and and your, you like just the, yeah. the whole dynamic here or your grandmother sorry um the yeah. whole dynamic there's layer upon layer yes and and really just drawing closer to god has been um a, a blessing in a sense so uh heather just give us some encouragement and encourage people who are re really busy in a few words tell us the importance or why or how to just find time for god okay well um it's sometimes when we are really busy it feels like it's just an another added um to do thing uh an added burden almost even though we wouldn't like to call it that of course um but that's what it can feel like but it's actually amazing when you when you take the time out of that time or do what i said um from from the beginning part when we were talking about how we recognize his presence even in the, every single little busy thing that we're doing um but just it's amazing how much improved quality of life in your heart and your spirit even in your physical body and everything that you do the more you spend with god the more energy and life he puts into us to give out into what we are doing it's actually not a burden at all even though it looks like that but when god draws us when his holy spirit's drawing us to come to him he actually gives into us far more than we can ever ask or imagine like it says in ephesians yeah. we don't know until you start to really pour into that to realize that's actually where he, he talks about himself as the living water and the life abundant well he's not he's telling us the truth that is what he does when we come to him he pours himself into us and then we have so much more to give out in in our busy days that we have to go through yeah mm. yeah excellent Hey, thank you so much for taking the time to do this. Yeah. We really welcome. appreciate thank it. Thank you. And um, it's good to see you on Sundays with your boys running around there and, you know, yeah. that kind of stuff. Yeah. 
Yeah. Well, yeah. say hi to them for us. And um, thank okay. you, Heather. Um, be blessed. Have a good rest of your sure. evening. You too. Okay. okay.